Hello everyone, Dr. Ames here. This time I'd like to talk to you about corporations. As you can see here, there's a variety of types and a few different details to know. Uh, conventional corporations or just the ones that we think about uh, as an average corporation. Um, it's state chartered legal entity. Well, that simply means you have to fire some, uh, file some specific paperwork. Uh, it does make it legal and so forth. And so it is binding once you do it. And uh, it really creates a entity as an organization that has the authority to act and it has liability that is separate from the owners or the founders. And that is one of the big uh, advantages of a corporation is it, it takes away that personal liability, that unlimited liability you might have as a general partner and so forth. Um, and of course, a corporation uh, will issue a stock at some point if they have an initial public offering and those stockholders uh, become the actual owners and any liability that's incurred by the corporation is not incurred by the uh, owners, in this case, the stockholders. The organization itself and its assets would have to take care of any legal obligations. Um, here we have something called the alien uh, corporation. Uh, these are just simply alien in the sense that they're foreign and they are corporations doing business in the United States, but their charter, their home country is uh, some other, other place. Um, that's as opposed to what we would say as a domestic corporation. Uh, they do business beginning in the state which uh, they have their headquarters or which they are chartered in. They become incorporated. That's considered their chartered state. Uh, they operate under those state rules and so forth. Um, but there is a distinction here, especially between uh, alien corporations and uh, foreign corporations. Um, it's really a legal distinction. Foreign corporations do business in one state but are chartered in another. So they're considered foreign in the sense that they might be U.S. companies, but since they operate or are chartered in one state and are doing operations in another, they would be considered by the operators or businesses in that state as being foreign corporations. This is different, and this is why we have a different term. Uh, alien corporations are clearly meant to identify foreign-owned corporations operating anywhere in the United States. So it's really a legal distinction made by the government, uh, probably through the Treasury Department, I would imagine, because the Treasury Department it, uh, handles the IRS, and they, of course, are the ones that handle paperwork for corporations. Um, so as you can see here, we also have uh, what are considered private corporations. These are called, uh, considered closed. They still have stock, but that stock is all owned just by a few people, usually the founders. It could be private in the sense it's a family, or it's one or two people, uh, and so forth. The stock is not made available to the general public, so uh, they really own everything, and uh, the fact that they have all this stock really increases personal wealth and so forth. Um, and then, of course, we have just regular public corporations. These could be domestic corporations or, depending on your point of view, foreign corporations from another state operating in your state. They sell stock to anybody who's got the money to buy it and so forth, and they sell it on the stock exchange. Now, what I would like to do here is um, if possible, so you, uh, show you some slides on some private corporations like we see right here. Uh, and we'll take a look at really uh, some of the top ones in the country and what their assets are. I think you might be surprised by how much their assets really are. So give me a moment to switch screens. Okay, as you can see here, we've got an article uh, from Forbes, and it's talking about the 20 largest private companies. Now, this is as of five years ago. Probably hasn't changed too much, maybe a little bit. As you can see here, Forbes looked at 216 companies that make the largest private companies uh, in the United States. Um, to get on that list, you have to make at least two billion in revenues any given year. So let's take a look. The first one is Cargill. Now Cargill, uh, revenue $120 billion a year, uh, and this is five years ago. Um, what are they into, Cargill? Uh, if you're familiar with the name, markets and processes agricultural products and services, 
provides financial services to the agricultural industry, uh, all sorts of industrial products and so forth. So machinery, everything you would need to do farming or agriculture on a very large scale. Uh, here we have Coke Industries. Uh, Coke is actually listed as two. I think this slide skipped on us. Coke Industries, $115 billion a year. Um, and they do just about everything that touches American life. Oil and refining chemicals, fibers and polymers, uh, commodities and financial trading, forest and consumer products. In fact, uh, the Coke Industries, really uh, everything that you are wearing, carrying around, you own in your house has been touched by the Coke Industries in some way. Anything that's got to do with plastic or plastic fibers or textiles or uh, energy, uh, the Koch brothers have made those products or they own the companies. They are fabulously wealthy. Um, and until just last year, it was mainly the two Koch brothers. Uh, one of them died a year ago. Uh, but basically, they are an incredible force for commerce in the United States. Let's jump back where we ought to be now with Dell. You can see here, $59 billion, not quite as big. But still, that's an estimate, too. Um, IT products and services, obviously, and Dell doesn't manufacture everything, of course. As you know, they contract out and they have companies building things for them. And then another one that you might not think of to be in the top, uh, Albertsons, 57 billion, again, very, very similar. Uh, supermarkets, of course. And let's just take a look at one more here. Bechtel. Bechtel, $37 billion a year, private companies, remember. So these uh, are not, uh, have pub they do not have publicly held stockholders. Uh, so some family, some group of individuals, uh, generally a family though, will own all these assets. And so their of course, Bechtel is a big industrial type firm, engineering, construction, managing products and so forth. Okay, folks, I think that's all I want to talk about this time. I'll talk to you next time real soon.